Hey, Jake here. What we're going to do today is we're going to change a bathroom ceiling exhaust fan. This fan's not doing a whole lot. The mirrors are all fogged up and the walls are soaked every time you shower. All right, let's get right into it. First thing you can do is you're going to pull the grill down. There are a couple of clips that hold the vent from completely falling off. You're going to pinch them together and remove them. That's basically how you do it, just like that. Okay, once you get the grill down and out of the way, you're going to see that there's always going to be a plug that plugs the uh, fan actually into the power supply, which is connected to the fan housing itself. Once you get that plug pulled out, you're going to have to find a way of actually pulling down the fan motor part itself. Usually a little shaking, and you can get this thing to come right down. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this particular fan is the fact that these blades have no pitch at all. That's the reason why there's no draw of air out of the room. By the way, guys, if you've not subscribed, please subscribe. We have a lot of cool videos coming up ahead. Okay, so once you get the grill and the motor down, you're going to have to get the actual frame or the body of the uh, vent out of the ceiling. Now, you're going to notice that it's going to be fixed in there, and usually it's connected by some screws. Sometimes there could be some tabs holding it in, but most of the time it's some screws, and it's being held to one of the beams up in the attic. So the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to climb up into the attic and find out what's holding it in. Let's go up there. Now, in my case, I had attic uh, crawl space access in my garage, so climbing up there right now. By the way, always use some sort of a respiratory mask and goggles when you climb up there because there's fiberglass insulation. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in. All right, so once you're up in the attic, be careful where you're walking. Make sure you're walking on the beams. Don't walk on the drywall. You're going to fall through the ceiling and that's not going to be good. So you're also at this point going to be looking for the vent. And if you have any idea where it is, you're just going to walk in that direction. You're going to find it. You're going to sit down and get comfortable because you have some work to do here. At this point, you're going to have to find the screws and you're going to have to disconnect the vent from the beam. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about right here. All right, so let's just get started first removing this vent tube. It's generally going to be held on by some aluminum tape and you're just going to peel it off and you're going to get that vent tube off of the old vent box because you are going to have to eventually reconnect that vent tube to the new vent box. And that's about as simple as it is. You peel the tape off, it's aluminum tape, and you pull the thing away. Next thing you can do is you're going to grab a electric screwdriver, preferably, and you're going to look for those screws that are on the side of the vent box that are holding it up against these uh, beams here and you're simply going to reverse those screws out until the vent box comes away and here is how you do it. By the way, when you buy these new fans, it'll say on the box, no attic access required, but the truth of the matter is you still got to get the old one out and generally the old one is going to be screwed in. All right, so you see we pulled that thing away. We have a nice hole. That's our bathroom right there. There's a the toilet and the sink. and you're going to see that the box has the wiring connected to it. We're just going to take that box and pass it through into the bathroom because we're going to disconnect the wires there. What we're also going to do is we're going to take that vent tube and I'm also going to put that in down through the opening because that may need to be connected a certain way and I just want to have it at my access just in case it's necessary. All right, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to have to go and you're going to have to find the power and shut the power off because you're going to end up having to disconnect the wires from that fan box and you do not want to have the uh, wires live while you do that. That particular thin wire there is the ground. You're going to find your wires. You can pull them out like that. Simply take the caps off. There should be some wire nuts on there. You can remove those wire nuts. And at that point, if you want, you could just pull the wires straight out of the box. All right, this is the fan I bought. It was a new tone, and I wanted to upgrade from my last fan that I had in my bathroom. It moves 110 cubic feet per minute of air and 1.0 on the sound scale, so it's kind of quiet. All right, let's get going opening this thing up. 
and you're going to grab a knife, you're going to open the box, first thing you're going to see at the very top is some instructions on a grill, pull the grill out, there's also going to be a piece of plastic there that looks like a vent, pull that out, It'll be a little bag of screws, we're going to also pull the entire fan uh, and motor out of the box. The next thing you notice that there's a template on the box and that's what you're going to use to cut the hole uh, out of your ceiling if you need to make the hole bigger which chances are you probably will um, and you'll have to cut the template out with a pair of scissors just like that. By the way if this new fan is actually smaller than your old fan you're going to have too big of a hole in your ceiling. So keep in mind it's easier to upgrade to a bigger fan than it is to downgrade to a smaller fan. Alright, so let's take our template. You're going to place it up against where a beam is going to be. Uh, you can see that through the hole. You're going to trace it out with a pen. And then you're going to take a uh, drywall saw like this. And you're going to cut the uh, hole out to match the, uh, the traced out template. By the way, all the items that I'm using in this video, I'm going to link in the description so you can get these parts and these tools um, at, the, uh, at, a, at a good price. All right, so once that is open, now we're going to go and we're going to uh, prepare this uh, fan uh, box to go into the hole. Let's take this fan out right now and it should pull right out of the fan housing like this. Now you're going to take your little vent piece, put it in the hole from the inside out. You're going to take a couple of screws that they provide and you're going to fasten that vent into the fan housing itself. Alright, now let's get this fan up and mounted into the ceiling. Depending on how you orient it, you could probably rotate it 90 degrees and they provide some holes in the metal. If you don't have holes that are already in the metal that line up with your uh, beams up top, you're going to probably just have to drill some new holes just to get the, the, the screws started. And you're going to use some standard sheet metal or drywall screws to hold this box into place. This is the easy part right here. Alright, I recommend at least two screws holding it up against that beam. Next, you're going to connect your wires. There's three wires coming off the switch. There'll be a black wire, a white wire, and a green wire. The green wire is your ground, and just make sure you connect green to green, black to black, and white to white. If you don't have a green wire coming off your new fan, or you don't have a, a green wire coming off your switch, and it's just a bare copper wire, make sure you ground it to the frame. Um, at that point, you're also going to use some wire nuts. Just connect your wire nuts on. And now you're going to take this little uh, triangular box and just pop it into place and your little outlet is going to be at the very, very bottom. Now you're going to take your fan and you're going to pop the fan back in. There may be a little set screw that you need to uh, put in that will hold the fan from falling back out. Now what you're going to do is you're going to plug the fan in. Take the little wire that's hanging there and you're going to plug it into that little outlet on that triangular box just like that and now your fan is ready to go as soon as you turn the power on and you flip the switch on the wall that fan is going to work. Here's the grill. The grill goes on by simply pinching those little wires together and popping them into the little metal tabs that are kind of hanging on the inside of that box. Not too difficult. And once you get the, the, the wire on there, you're going to push the grill into place and it's perfect, just like that. Next, let's go back into the attic and now we're going to connect the duct. In my case, I had to get this reducer. If you could see, it actually goes into a thinner part, which is the duct, and then it connects with a wider part up to the actual new fan housing. And it's only because it, they're two different sizes, and I, so I had to get this reducer. And I'm also going to send the link. The link will be in the description as to where to get that particular 
reducer. It goes from, I think, five inches to four inches. Make sure you have a fresh roll of aluminum tape. Seal it up good, wrap it around really good so there's no leaks and you're all done. Don't forget to go back in your garage and turn the power back on. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Please subscribe. Got a lot of cool videos coming up ahead. Thumbs up or appreciated. Have a great day. Bye.